Good morning, Pio Nation! I hope you're wide and awake. Uh, I am... Thank you, first of all, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. My name is Matt Williamson. Uh, Quentin Chisholm from the Overwatch team again. Yep, and you're watching Married to College Esports. So this morning we have quite a few matches for you for a good portion of the day. So we're just minutes away from our Rainbow Six white team going up against University of the Cumberland. So uh, yesterday you watched our blue team play against uh, St. Clair College. It was a very tough defeat, but we knew that St. Clair was a, a very good uh, esports program. Now, I don't know too much about University of Cumberland. I think our Rainbow Six team last year played them. It was either that or our League of Legends team. I can't remember which one it was, but they were pretty good. So we'll see how things go today. Uh, we're getting things set up in the lobby right now. So I'm going to go over the uh, uh, the lineup for the white team real quickly uh, while we're, they're getting everything uh, set up here. Uh, so we have our captain, Luca the Don, Donnie Waters. Um, today we'll also have uh, freshman Chris Permi, who Justify playing. Uh, we'll have freshman Levi Sprouse to send Darkness. Uh, freshman Haley Newman seeing Azura. And then senior Ying Zing Wong, Rico Rodriguez. Now you may be wondering, well, wasn't Rico on our black team? Uh, unfortunately, our black team uh, is not able to continue their competition. So we were able to get permission from the collegiate R6 admins to include Rico in our on our white team. Uh, so that's why he'll be playing for today. Uh, unfortunately, Brett again, again is not available today. I think he has a, a rowing match or something. Uh, so uh, that's why he will not be uh, online for uh, today's match. Um, so yeah, they're still getting things set for the lobby. It's a best of three. Uh, my understanding is it'll be Clubhouse first with Marietta defending. And then uh, the second map is Oregon. And then if we go to a third map, it will be Cafe. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, while we are waiting, have a couple of quick announcements. Uh, so we announced this yesterday. We'll remind everyone uh, today that because of your support uh, and your subscriptions, we have accessed a new emote slot. And we've asked our communication brand management department to make some new emotes. And they're all really great. Uh, in fact, you can see them right here. We have Pio Rage, Pio Thump, Pio Law, and Pio S. And we don't know which one to use yet. So we're going to ask you to do that. So we have a nice little poll set up at link to dot run slash p slash h a two h z six u n and you can vote for which one uh you want to be able to use on our twitch chat uh so the poll will close next friday october 9th and whichever has the most votes will be the one that you'll be able to use and then depending on how the rest of the votes go it'll give us an idea of as we unlock more emote slots we'll be able to add the rest of these to our repertoire so thank you once again for your support uh also once again, I just still got to double check the lobbies and everything to make sure that they haven't started without us. Uh, also, another big announcement that we just put out on social media uh, this morning. Uh, so the college is doing a fundraising campaign as part of the stay at homecoming that we're going to be doing this year. So uh, unlike previous homecomings, because with everything that's going on with uh, COVID-19, we are not going to be able to have an in-person homecoming uh, this year. I know many people are disappointed with that. Uh, we're trying to pl uh, play it safe with everything going on. So we will have a stay at, uh, stay at home coming with all sorts of online activities for everyone. Um, but as part of the effort, uh, the college is doing a campaign to raise funds to help with supporting the athletics department. Uh, so what you can do is you can make a gift and every $5 counts towards a ticket to, uh, towards the Don Drum Stadium. So our goal is to try to sell out Don Drum Stadium virtually. The stadium seats 5,000 people. So at $5 a ticket, the goal is to raise $25,000. Now here's where things get interesting. Uh, when you make your gift, you can designate an, a an athletic team where 50% of your gift will go directly to that team. Esports is on that list. We are under athletics. So if you want to help support athletics and esports at the same time, you can go to the link that's provided here, bit.ly slash virtual sellout, and make a gift of any amount, but for every $5, it counts as a ticket, and half of your gift would go towards esports if you designate esports as your team. Now, if you pick another team like football or baseball, it'll go to them. But it would be nice if you give to us. 
Now, here's where things get really interesting because this is a competition among all of the, of the teams. So the team that sells the most tickets gets an additional $1,000 for their program. Right, hold on, I want to check another thing here. Okay, yeah, we're just getting some things. To, the other teams just have some questions about Moss. Um, yeah, so they're just getting, okay. Yeah, just making sure everything's good with the team before we get things underway. But yeah, as I was saying, there's a competition among all of the athletic teams, including eSports. I think cheerleading's on the list as well. So whichever team sells the most tickets uh, gets $1,000 for their program. So I will say it's going to be a tough competition for us because a lot of these teams have uh, a long history of alumni that will probably give to support their programs. But wouldn't it be awesome if among all the teams out there competing for the most sales, eSports is the one that wins? I mean... You just want the funding so we can be able to do more stuff. I know that. But. Yeah, and, the, and that's the thing, though. Like, even if we don't win the competition, any money that's raised, half of it does goes towards our program directly. The other half goes towards athletics. So when we're all competing with each other, we're all going to win in the long run. No matter who actually wins the $1,000, we're all winners here to be able to help with uh, building our program. So, I mean, we want to do our part to help with the athletics teams as well because oh, – yeah. Uh, with everything going on, we can say that we are fortunate that we're able to compete this semester. And even last year when we went online, we were fortunate that some of our uh, esports teams were able to continue co uh, competing. But we can't say the same for athletics. I mean, fall athletics has been postponed to the spring, and we're crossing our fingers and hoping that we'll be able to see some football, some cross country, soccer, basketball in the spring. Um, so right now, that they're those programs are working on trying to, to build everything up and. And trying to give boost the uh, the players' morale. So if we can do our part to, to help with that, I think that would be really good for the the college in general. And if we could win the competition too, that'd be great. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely rough not having a whole lot of sports to cheer on for mm -hmm. for an entire semester. Exactly. Like right now, the only thing that we can cheer on is our uh, Rainbow Six team. Which speaking of our Rainbow Six team, they just got everything started up. So let's get over there. Okay. Again, but that's okay. <laughs> I know why it's not set up that way, but I need to remember to do that instead of hitting the button. But okay, so let me do a couple things here real quick to make it easier for us to see things. So I need to do. There we go. Now we can see all the players. Uh, just at okay, so we're getting to the band phase. So we're gonna see the Thatcher being banned out and. We've seen the band a couple of times. Yes. They're very good to just... It's it's a good stopping. Because if you have a bunch of uh, fortified reinforcements that you can't get through, they're my way to do it. But now they got to go clear out unless they have a Maverick. Yeah, especially, especially since this is Clubhouse, that's going to make that wall over at the CCTV uh, station yep. a little bit more difficult to breach. For sure. Yeah, and just as a reminder for everyone... Um, because of the change in the collegiate R6 rules, we're not going to, okay, so we do see Jacoby ban, but we're not going to be able to do like that overview spectator view that we've done last year. Uh, we're, we're not allowed to be an observer for any of the players if they're in the same building as we are. And we have a couple, we have our broadcasting station, in our esports facility, and a couple players right outside. So to make sure that we're not violating any collegiate R6 rules, uh, we are not doing the overview like we've done. Instead, we have a software system called NDI that allows us to be able to view the game from the player's perspectives. Now, right now, the only player that we have set up to do that is Luca the Don, our uh, Rainbow Six white team captain. Um, the other players are mostly playing from their own rooms, and that's just because of safety precaution because of COVID-19. So while we are able to continue competing uh, this semester, we are trying to do our part to stay safe, to, to, to maintain social distancing. So we are encouraging our players to play from their rooms if they're capable of doing so. So we're only going to be able to see the game from one person's perspective, but that's okay. Because we're still able to show you mostly what's going on in the match. Now, how about that vigil ban? I don't think I've seen a vigil ban before. He is a very useful character. In the sense that attackers can't see him, and which gives me pause because 
uh, Cumberland is the one that picked that, and they're on defense first. But Marietta did also uh, ban the Malusi, so that's a uh, one way to stop slowing them down. Which um, I can't really make too many comments because I haven't seen the white team play yet. So I'm yeah. Gonna... So what's going to be interesting is we're we're familiar a little bit with the blue team's play style and the kind of ops that they like to run. This is the first time that we're actually able to broadcast the white team uh, play. So, like, they played a couple weeks ago, but unfortunately, we were not able to stream it. I think it was, like, super late, and we didn't get a chance to pre-record it, which we had. Um, and last week, well, let's not get into last week. That was a mess. Um, <laughs> but, but now, so we, this is the first time we're actually going to be able to see uh, our white team perform I mean, it doesn't look too out of the ordinary. I mean, we see the, the six pick being used for Zofia. And we see the hard breach. We actually see some very hard breachers with yeah. Dermai, Ash, and Ace. So we may see a more aggressive play style from the white team than the, the blue team. The only thing they're truly missing is if they have. I saw that the uh, Cumberland had Mute and Kaid. And so they're. One thing, though, is going to have to be getting past that in order to be as hard and aggressive as they would want to be. Well, we're looking from Luca the Don's perspective, and they've already located the bomb. And doesn't, at least from uh, Don's perspective, the mute has not been a problem. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. I know mute disrupts drones, but does the mute do anything else? Uh, it, you can use mutes the same as you could use bandit. A uh, mute charge will get two walls. It's just a little easier to uh, get rid of, in okay. my opinion. Okay. Because, like, bandit with his charges, he can only get four walls. Mutes can uh, potentially get up to eight. Okay. Because it has such a wide radius on it. So it doesn't look like there's going to be any spawn peeking this time around. We saw a lot of that last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so based on where they're going, it looks like the bomb is probably in the, the gym area. If I... Yeah, uh, I think that's cash and CCTV. Oh, really? You would think it would get this, go the other way if it was over at uh, CCTV, but... But we already seen it. Seeing as Zura has gone down, I mean... She will get revived. I don't know if she got hit or if she just fell I, off. I think she fell off. And if that's the case, I'll have a talk to her later. <laughs> <laughs> and say that's not a great way to start the uh, the round. Yeah, that's already getting yourself down to the twenty health. We do hear the gunshots and. Uh, we see the ace there looking to try to breach. Yeah, I see that electric yeah, as we're they, talking about the. Like with that thermite is what's getting them because they have the bandits on the wall and then they have a mute uh, on the drone hull. Oh, they just got the mute. Mm -hmm. That's them my breach charge, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but without that thermite, it's going to be really difficult to, to breach. And we're seeing Azura did go down. I don't know from where though, unless that was a bomb peak off from the left or what? Not sure. Looks like they've opened up the wall, the uh, floor there to see if they can catch Marietta from underneath, but it doesn't look like anyone's right there. We just see Luca to go down to the mute. We do see Justify getting killed, but Send Darkness goes down, so it's a one for one trade. 17 seconds remains in the round. There's only two left in the Pioneers, so they gotta take out the other four members of Cumberland's. And we're seeing Rico going down, so Justify's the only one that's left. And Cumberlands will take the first round. And 
looks like Justify is having some audio issues, which is not going to be good. I think... Yeah, so I, th I think with the audio issues, Merida can request a rehost. Uh, I think each team only gets two rehosts. Yeah, they're they're talking about it right now. Yeah, because in, in a game like Rainbow Six, it is really important to have your audio to be able to here for cues and oh yeah audio, audio is important in most games i will definitely say that but rainbow is the game where comms are usually the quietest except for a couple call outs here and there because everyone's trying to listen uh on what's going on mm -hmm. yeah all right so marietta will use one of its rehosts to fix the audio issues um so hopefully we get that working. So the way that the rehost works is they'll recreate the lobby and they can set it up with the same bands as before and just that Cumberlands will have the first round. Okay, so we're going to give them a, a, ch a chance to get that set up. So while they're doing that, we'll go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be back uh, in just a few minutes as soon as they get their lobby set up. All right, welcome back. Um, we've got the lobby set up, and uh, I think they're just getting the uh, the game set up to make sure that the bands are all set up. They're doing the ready checks now. So we should be good to go very soon. We're just making sure that uh, Justify is, I think, yeah, I'm looking at the, the chat right now. Uh, look at the Don is saying yes. So. Here we go. So hopefully they got it set up where, um, yeah, round two, there we go. All right, so everything is, everything looks good. We're back to the way things were. Band order may be a little different here, but it's still the same bands. Thermites, <laughs> Jackal, Vigil, and Lucy. But, all right. Now we just gotta cross your fingers and hope that the audio is working for Justify. 
Good luck, have fun version two. There we go. Okay. Uh, looks like... So interesting that Cumberlands is going with Warden. I would expect that to be six picked. I mean, no Warden's better than what he was before. I don't know. Warden as a defender is good for smokes and flashes. And but I feel like he only like for the most part counters Ying, because Ying is just in everyone's business with her flashes. But what bothers me about Ying's gadget is her glasses only work on her gadget. It does not work on normal flashbangs. Hmm. Which kinda gives Warden the one up on that because if her if Ying and someone else are throwing flashbangs then he can see through both yeah, really well, easily. We don't have a Ying, though. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't Which, think that's going to be an issue. We got a Havana with Blackbeard. And... They still have the kind of fast breach setup, but depending on what point it is, it's... Now, shouldn't the round have started by now? Uh, there we go. Okay, I was about to say, that's, that's a very long zero... Seeing as Zero was still loading in. Oh, okay. Uh, Sometimes it takes a bit. Yeah, I hope we're not having any connection issues. There we go. I was getting scared for a second. It's like, uh, what's going on? Do we have to do another rehost? Yeah, okay, so I think they're going to check for. Okay, so smoke's been uh, pointed out. Ten seconds to go. Yeah, bomb looks like Arsenal and Church. Uh huh. Five seconds. Proceed to bomb's location and defuse it. Okay, so it's interesting it's a 4 1 split. Look at the on side to uh, take a, a different route compared to everyone else. I am quite curious about the. Roof approach. Looks like they've already made their way in. I guess it's maybe to avoid spawn peaks because they'd probably, and maybe they're thinking that Cumberlands would anticipate. Oh, there's an explosion. But maybe they're anticipating the spawn near that the back tunnel, so they spawn. Completely different places to avoid spawn peaks. That that that's my theory. Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe Blackbeard out. Uh, Zero walked into a cap cam with Blaker and second out Luca. Mm See, is Blackbird not even... Okay, I was supposed to say, it was so zoomed in, I couldn't even see the shield. Like, he's got to have that shield on, right? Yes. And you do see the, the camera zoom spot out the smoke, and I don't know who that other one is. Valkyrie. Valkyrie, okay. Really? You see, I can't tell who people are. Mariana has about 50 seconds left. Uh, so they're going to have to start moving soon. If they take too long, then the round will go to Cumberlands without too much of a fight. I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but it's looking a lot like last night with the, uh, with the urge to play very cautiously and it not working out for them. Yeah, and Blakings is able to take out two from the Pioneers, and I think he was also the one that took out Luca as well. Yes. 
So that's three frags in this round, and then all that's left is just Rico if she falls. Four K by Blakers. Yeah, I think part of it's just Marietta took too long and it gave Cumberland a chance to get some frags and take the round. Yeah, it almost seemed like Marietta wasn't so sure exactly how to approach the uh, the bomb site. The the therm the th not thermite the Thatcher band. That that is really messing with Marietta right now because they can't they've been going hard breachers but they have nothing too hard breach. Okay, now they finally went the Maverick, which the Maverick is a decent last resort when it comes to not having a Thatcher. Although they're gonna go with the IQ as well. I'm not so sure. I mean, they did have one bomb go off in the last round. They may be looking to try to detect those so they don't trigger any of those traps. I mean, a Capcom track is you're automatically to half health. So it's, you run into two of those and you're dead. And I believe you can set up five or six around the map. Yeah, it's just that one went off last time and took Blackbeard down to half health. I think that got them spooked. I mean, they have to know that this is, this should be uh, at gym, right? Because they already did CCTV. They've already did. Yeah, so this Arsenal. one is in gym because no one is going to pick the uh, first floor one because that is a bad choice at, from the start. Because I don't think it would let you, if I remember right. I think you have to. Think you have to rotate, right? So if you win one, you can't pick that one again, or. Yeah. So well, eventually they'll have to uh, defend the middle floor, but mm -hmm. if they keep. Winning, then it'll just have to reset on what they can pick. Bomb has been located. So they're working their way to that wall right now. Does not appear to be electrified. I do hear a meat shammer on it though. I was trying to get a frag grenade in there to get rid of that mute jammer. We're gonna see the others kind of work their way around. There's some gun exchange. Ash takes a little bit of damage. But Descent gets a frag onto Salad. That's a really weird statement. Uh, <laughs> just Look, you so, got a thing for Salad? Someone being named Salad. Oh, I'm not go getting Don. Yeah, another frag on to seeing Azura. And we're gonna see Descend go down too by I Gray. So all that's left are uh, Rico and Justify. 2v4, Marietta down. Not impossible, but it is gonna be difficult. Especially both uh, Rico and Justify have taken some damage. Do you see some exchange of gunfire? Rico takes a big hit down to seven health. And we're seeing Justifies going in. And he goes down, so Rico's the only one that's left, and he's gonna get knocked uh, picked off. Excuse me if I say you just a little more quiet. I'm still waking up. It's all good. <laughs> it's a it's a little early. 
I set my alarm clock to 7.30, it went off, and I just turned it off, and was like, my roommate has this set for eight, so I'm going to sleep a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. but we do appreciate everyone joining us uh, bright and early on a Saturday. I'm sure everyone would love to get a couple more hours of sleep instead of being here, but you know what? We're talking about video games. It's always a good time to talk about video games. I hope you stay around uh, later for both Overwatch and League of Legends. Is oh yeah, we we're gonna be here for most of the day, <laughs> at least until mid afternoon. Yeah, both of the uh, those matches should be exciting. Uh, if you're wondering about Rocket League, where it is a bye weekend for Rocket League, so they will resume uh, on Tuesday as part of the Nace Collegiate uh, Fall Cup. Uh, I know they play against Valpo, and I can't remember who they're playing against next. I can tell you just a second here as soon as I can uh, pull up schedules as that gets updated. Or, we need to locate a um, dude, no, that's that's the uh, that's the Rock League schedule for GLEC. Next Saturday, they'll play against Bethel. Uh, let's see here. So Overwatch will be playing against uh, Brian Stratton College. And I don't remember what the other one is. Okay, yeah, so on Tuesday, our Rocket League team will be playing against Valpo, and then also the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, so that'll be Tuesday starting at 8 o'clock in the evening, so be sure to check that out. But then our Overwatch team will have a match uh, on Monday, so we're going to have a lot of matches for you in the coming weeks. And all of October, it's just going to be eSport match after eSports match. Yeah, I know. Overwatch is going to be plenty filled, because we'll have matches every... Saturday and Monday and Thursday mm -hmm. for the two different divisions. Yep. It's going to seem busy, but it's a good busy. It's it's nice that we're going to be able to participate in a variety of competitions. We get to play with more schools. We get to learn about uh, how we do compete against other schools. So it's just a, a great opportunity. All right, we're going to see Marietta make their way. They have spotted out at least though, four of the five ops that they're going up against. Uh, gonna go with the same comp as last time. Although Capitol has been knocked down. He's not dead yet, but he is uh, knocking on death's door. They're able to finally get a breach off, hopefully. It's not on to point, but that's still a good reinforcement by Cumberland. Yeah, so they're gonna get into garage. They got the cameras. Although I'm surprised Capito hasn't bled out yet. He hasn't been revived either. No, I believe. I believe Capito's up and walking. He's got like what? But maybe one health. Oh, he, oh he, I see the flashing. He's just got like one health left or just a very small amount. There he has got someone cornered. And Rinka takes out Blaker, who had that the three or four K from the other uh, earlier round. But many from the pioneers are very low. In fact, Luca gets knocked down. He's going to try to get down to the bottom of the steps before he gets finished off, and hopefully, either Rinka or Descent can revive him. Yeah, he's going to get back up, but he's going to be very low in health. And Marion only has 49 seconds left. So while they have a numbers advantage, many of them are very low on health. And the 5v4, so it's up in their head in that way, but Marietta, three of their teammates are one tap. Very easily. Yeah, they got 30 seconds left, so they're going to have to make a move. Very difficult push for them. And Descent takes out I Grace, so that's two down. Reloading. And Rico takes out Unlogical, so there's only two left for Cumberland. And the others are spotted out. And the area does plant the diffuser, and they take the round by finishing off the rest of the Cumberlands. A nice uh, cleanup there by Justify. It, it took a little bit, but they finally got 
the uh, kind of uh, aggression we were talking about last night, where you get to point and force them to come to you. Mm-hmm. Because now it's not your timer, it's their timer. Yeah. Yeah, before, Accomplice just had to wait for Marietta to, to make a move. But once you get that diffuser planted, it basically swaps sides at that point. So now Cumberlands would have to react, and Marietta just can wait for them. It also helped that they were able to get an early breach. I think that's one of the things that they've been struggling with uh, so far in this game, is they finally got a breach into Garage, and that allowed them to be able to get in and try to win by numbers, which did work. I mean, most of them were very low to help, but the numbers advantage definitely paid off. Oh, yeah. I mean, even if uh, three of the team members are one tap, they still have a gun that they can shoot back mm-hmm. at. So it doesn't mean they're out of the game. It just means that they got to be really careful when it comes to getting a shot at. Yes. Marietta has found locations, probably Church Arsenal. Ooh, finally a pulse pick. Ten seconds. So that's the first time I've seen one in these matches. I know Rez likes to play him a lot. At least played him a lot last year. Proceed to bomb location and defuse it. But yeah, so maybe uh, Cumberland's was kind of surprised by the garage breach. For CCTV, so they want to try to have a better idea of where they're coming from. We also have a valve now, so that's even more cameras, more intel on where they're at. Yeah, they do not want any surprises. Pre-firing, gonna give up the location, but gonna try, we're just gonna try to see if he can uh, catch anyone. Does see the bullets flying? I'm dry. They'll bring the drone out to see if they can spot where they're located. Yeah, most of Marietta's on, like, it's basically a 4-1 four, four, split. Ever seen Luca goes down very quickly. Marietta still has one minute remaining, but that's not a lot of time. They're going to have to start making a move. They've just kind of been staying there for about a minute. The oh, now we see Salad taking out, seeing a zero. So that's two uh, frags for Salad. A couple from Cumberland's are being spotted out. We see Rico trying to get something onto someone, but not able to connect. But 30 seconds remains, and Rico's going to go down. But Justify does take out one, but they only got 10 seconds left. They're going to have to take out the rest or get that uh, diffuser planted. Justify's going to go, but he falls to Salad. I grade finishes off the rest. I don't know. I probably don't have a whole lot the room to say on this uh, from a bit of my gameplay on Overwatch, but it uh, seems like there's a lack of commitment to certain things. So they're just sitting at the one place and not really going forward with it, not going around to try a different mm-hmm. approach. Yeah. 
I think it seems like they're afraid to commit to a play. Like, okay, what do we do? Well, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And they don't know exactly what to do. Or maybe they have an idea, but maybe they don't feel confident with the play. The other thing I'm noticing is it seems like their reaction is a little slower than Cumberland. So, I mean, it really comes down to when you see someone, whoever pulls the trigger first wins. And it's looking like that uh, Cumberland is able to pull that trigger faster than Marietta. And they're once again picking the same team comp, but they've just uh, adjusted who's playing what character. And it seems like that might not be the problem. It might just be that they need a different set of characters. You need to use your drone to locate a bomb. All right, I'm going to fix something here real quick. Looks like Mary uh, Ed is once again tacking on to Cash and CCTV. Sounds like they're actually being able to get some breaches onto the site. Let me take care of something quick. Just take over. Yeah, no problem. There he is, already down one. Seems like there's just not a lot of coordination on these pushes. It's it's everyone's kind of separate. Mm -hmm. We're really getting another pick on Marietta. And another. It's currently two v five. Marietta to Cumberland. Four situation for justify. Will be five. My bad. Op four eliminated all friendly. Great picking off justify. Yeah, that <sighs> doesn't seem like there's just a whole lot of coordination because there should be usually one person with the hard breacher. And so they can go in together, or it's the whole team is one, converging on one side of the point. But that that round seemed like everyone was here and there, and we only get the perspective of one. That would be Luca. Um, but it's I don't know. It was a very awkward kind of feel for me watching that. 
And now we're on defense. Yeah, so we are at... Although, hold on. Why does it say it's match point? Should go to seven, not six. Yeah, it should be the first who wins seven rounds. Um... Well, we'll see what happens, but there might be, there might have been an error with the uh, with the game setup, but we'll we'll see here. Yeah, it shouldn't be match. That's odd. It shouldn't be match point. Secure the bombs. Now, I'm very curious to watch uh, white team play defense because uh, I, w I wanted to see more blue team and they played a very slow defense that was supposed to slow them down, slow the attacking team down as well. Uh, it looks like these guys are going to a very similar approach, but I, w I wonder how it's going to work for them. Right, I mean. I know the blue team went with that strategy because they knew how fast St. Clair was, was playing on offense. Yes. Um, what's interesting is this time the white team is going with a frost and a dock, which I haven't seen too much. I know Rico likes to play dock, so that's probably why we see him. But I don't think I've seen frost in a while, so we'll see if the bear trap makes a, a difference here. I think Doc's always a, just a good versatile pick for the fact that he's got decent guns. Uh, he can either be an anchor on point uh, and keep it locked down and heal his teammates, or if you have a roaming Doc, which it's kind of risky to run, because he's such a loud character because three armor uh, operators make bigger sounding steps. Mm -hmm. But uh, it can it can work as well, being able to go around the map slowly and taking out people methodically. And being able, if you take any damage, to heal yourself. So the next fight, it's like a whole reset. Mm. I see they have a Maverick. Yeah, so th since they know that Thatcher's being banned. And Although Marietta decided to not go with... I mean, they got with the Kaid instead of the, the Bandit. They're looking to try to get a peek. In fact, Rico does take out Unlogical. They have a Nomad as well. Op 4 has located a bomb. Looks trying to make them back a little bit from the good force spins, but you see Justify going down. The thing's coming only has thirty five seconds to, to make moves, so they're taking their time as well. This may fall in the Marietta's favor because that's going to force them to rush and maybe make a mistake. Ooh. No bad trap went up. Ooh, Rico getting the two with the C4. Protect the bombs and disable the diffuser. Yeah, but they got to work their way in because now Mary is forced to make a play. No, the defuser, I mean, the diffuser's down. All they got to worry about is... All Cumberland has to worry about is being able to make sure that they don't get that off. Well, Sal took out seeing Azura. Bomb diffusing devices disabled. Mission successful. Marietta wins the round with the diffuser mm -hmm. stable. En enough cover to not get shot and diffuse it. I wish I could have seen that round from Riga's perspective. He played that one really well. Yeah. Had a good C4. Oh well. yeah, very yeah, very good C4 a frag.
I might have to run across the street and get a cup of Tim Hortons <laughs> before my match. <laughs> okay. But that's that's how it's feeling right now. I'm awake, but part of me is absent. Mm -hmm. you're, you're physically here, and that might be it. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, the gridlock pick. So they're going to swap to... Wait, they're going to bring out the oh. pulse. No, Cumberland's got a very their team. Matt Cumberland, to say they're the ones that picked the Thatcher, but since Marietta held off so much, uh, enough to the point where it's their turn of defense now, Cumberland has to worry about not having a Thatcher, which they kind of saw with the Maverick last time, but they didn't, they didn't use him as well as they could have, I believe. And but now they have three softball breachers, Havana, their hardball breacher, and then a gridlock. So with with that, I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna run out to point quick and then put down gridlock and defuse. Because gridlock gadgets are fantastic for making sure that others cannot uh, rush you like you would, they would want them to. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to be able to spot out two. Actually, three. I think it was... Yeah, there's another blip right there. Pulse? I don't know. To me, he's a roaming character, except on certain uh, certain uh, rooms. This room, I feel like he should be on point. Because he has the C4. And if anyone tries to breach from up top, he can have the C4 ready. Because that wall, that floor right there, ceiling... Okay, depends on what side you're on. Uh, it is breakable, and he can get a really nasty pick. Yeah, so I think he's knows that there's going to be someone directly above him. So just like that, does not get the frag. Uh, Cumberland using the trick they. Thermited the floor beside the hatch to both get part of the floor and the hatch. They, they were smart enough to know that and, and successful on Mar Marietta's uh, pause. Look could get in the frag on Salad, which is nice because Salad seems to be one of their heavy hitters. Although Rang is going to take out Seeing Azura, so it's a 4v4. But the Sen gets a frag on the Eye Gray. Luke is going to spot someone directly above him, or at least one around. Justify takes out Unlogical. Justify is going to go down, so right now it is a 3v2. In favor of the pioneers, although Luca is a little bit low on health. Reload. Fifteen seconds. But the problem is, Cumberland's only has ten seconds, so they're gonna have to either finish off the rest of Marietta or plant the bomb. And Rico team kills the send. But Rico's able to take out the remaining two, so we'll we'll say redemption there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think Marietta wins whether Rico dies in that situation or not, but it's a little unfortunate that he did get the team kill off on uh, Descendant. Yeah, it, it looked like it might have been like an explosion or something, but... I, I, I'm i assuming that he was just in between the crossfire. Yeah, it happens. That's, yeah, it, 
You don't like to see it, but it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now they're going with an even more slow approach on this round. You got the Frost, Cat Cam, and Smoke with the Jaeger and Kaede as well. Cameron's yeah, still running the Maverick and Nomad, which I think I think are good picks because mm -hmm. Maverick is what you have to use instead of a Thatcher. Now it's not as effective and it's more time consuming. But I can get the job done, and Nomad is just a good way to react to Marietta slowing them down. Because it in return slows uh, down Marietta. Ooh, that might need to be placed a little closer. Ten seconds left. Be advised, Op Four has found a bomb. Five seconds left. Running. Op Four has and located down the, the jammers. The hip fire leading is something I'm not used to seeing because you can't do that on console. There's not enough buttons. You can't lean from this from the hip. Hmm. Located a bomb. Protect it. You check for a second from him. Yeah, it looks like they're they have breached the wall. Look at being a little pinned here. I think there's someone else over watching the other the breached wall though. Great dodge with the flashbang, but he still gets taken out mm. unfortunately. The headshots will do it. Yeah. Rico's gonna fall, but seems her does take out Blakens. So it is a 3v4, but Frost is very low. And they've already planned the diffuser. One one issue I'm kinda of seeing from Marietta is that they're all on point. They have no one roaming, at least far away, or kind of close. It seems like they're all in one big barrel for them to shoot into. It doesn't look like Mary is going to be able to come back from this one. I mean, Yanger's the only one that's up, but he's got to take out the rest of them. Yeah, and with that, the rest have been uh, taken out. And I got to see what's going on with the, the lobby here because that's the sixth win. Yeah, that. Yeah, there's a problem there, I think, because it should go to seven. Not six. Uh, so I'm going to go check with the team real quick with that, but I'll be right back. All right. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> Mary, Mary, I think it would be some higher than that. And yeah, it's with that not going to seven, like it should have. Um, Yeah, I see it. Lucas uh, having that in now, but with the rounds being cut off kind of close, it's odd to tell how it could have went. Marietta could have gotten the bigger lead there, potentially, but it's... Okay, yeah.
Okay. So you gotta <laughs> readjust it, reset it, and yeah, the, the Cumberland recognizes that they made a mistake when they created the uh, when they did the rehost that. Uh, it should be seven wins to win instead of six, but they're getting that set up. Um, so we'll just give them a second here. It, it happens. I mean, no harm, no foul. So they're just going to do a quick uh, readjustment of the lobby. Well, it's approaching 10 o'clock, and hopefully we get some more people getting awake and <laughs> right now, yeah, hopefully. We've got nine viewers, which is pretty good for 10 a.m. <laughs> on a Saturday. I mean, yeah, the one thing is it's a weekend. Some people are going to be visiting family if they want to. Other people are just going to spend the day to relax. Yeah. Others will use it to catch up on homework. Yes. Or grading. I have so Ooh. much stuff to grade later on today. It's not even funny. <laughs> I mean, I changed mat, uh, majors to uh, mathematics with only AYA, so I'll, I'll field that eventually. <laughs> Goodness. It, like, skin is really pale lately. I haven't been in the sun in forever. All my tans going away. Well, it is getting colder, so it's not as uh, advisable to go outside when it's really cold out True. there. But yeah, we're I still mean... getting... All right, so still getting things set up. They're going to get back to Clubhouse, and they're readjusting the lobby here. So we should be getting going uh, very soon. Uh, in fact, it's so soon, I don't even think we need to necessarily take a break here. Uh, so while we're waiting, just just a few quick reminders. So for all the latest updates with what's going on with Marietta uh, Esports, please be sure to follow us on social media. So we do have a Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All that is Marietta Esports. So just slash Marietta Esports. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. So you can watch all of our previous matches. Uh, we don't have a vanity URL for that yet. So you can just do bit.ly slash Marietta Esports. With enough support, if we get enough people uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a custom URL to be easier to, to put in. So even the matches that you're watching today, they will be up uh, several days from now on YouTube. But if you can't wait that long, and you have to watch this match again, or if you missed our, Rocket, uh, not Rocket League, our Rainbow Six match last night and want to see that right away, you can subscribe to our Twitch channel to get immediate access to our VODs. So you can subscribe there, whether it's a, a regular sub or not, but uh, your support will help us with being able to build our program. We've already seen what that does for us. So uh, because of your generosity, we now have access to a new emote slot. Um, so we've reached out to our communication brand management department to create some new custom Pio emotes. And we see them right here. They look awesome. I think they look awesome. Uh, but we don't know which one to pick. So you get to decide which one that is. So you go to our poll at link2.run slash p slash h a 2 h z 6 u n. I should have come up with a vanity URL for that, but too late for that now. And you can decide what will be the next emote available on our Twitch channel. Uh, last I checked, I believe Pio S is winning. So if you want to see Pio S as the next emote, be sure to make your voice heard. But if you don't want that, you want something else, then you got to make sure you go vote and tell your friends to vote too. The poll will end next Friday and we'll have the next emote available for next Saturday's uh, matches. But, but yeah, so because of your support uh, by subscribing to our channel, we're able to do things like this. Now, if you don't have the money to uh, support our Twitch channel, that's perfectly fine. But if you have an Amazon account, especially an Amazon Prime account, then you could help us uh, help uh, support our program and uh, sub to our channel for free with Prime Gaming. Is, that, is, is it Prime Gaming? Is it Amazon Gaming? I can't remember. It's, it's no longer Twitch Prime. I think it's Prime Gaming. Uh, I, I gotta look this I up don't, now. I, don't, I didn't know about that because I'm used to... I, I watch streamers that always talk about Amazon Prime and using yeah. that to make a Twitch Prime. 
Yeah, it's yeah, it's called Prime Gaming, formerly known as Twitch Prime. So you can take your Amazon Prime account, create a free Twitch account, link it to Amazon Prime, and then you get Prime Gaming, which gives you all sorts of perks. Maybe it's skins for certain uh, characters in different games. Or you get a free sub that you can use to any channel every month. But you have to manually renew it every month. So you could use your Twitch Prime sub to help our channel. So there's my shameless plug for the hour. But okay, so it looks like we are getting the game underway. So let's get back. So this is still game one. Uh, Clubhouse, this should be match point. Cumberland's is up six to three. There you go, match point. Marietta is... Marietta. Shouldn't Marietta be defending? Possibly. Uh... Oh, yep. <laughs> yep, that, that, that's an oof. Alright, guys. Well, uh, we're, get, we're getting the cakes work down here. It's too early in the morning. We all know this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what happens when we try to play a competitive esports match at nine in the morning. All right, gonna get that. We'll get this figured out, guys. Don't worry. Sooner or later. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be done before noon because we do have an Overwatch match then, and would like to be able to show that to you guys. But we still got two hours left. A little less than two hours, actually. Eh, we can make it. Yeah, depends how things go. I mean, if not, I'll have to dip out a little early, but mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, uh, I, I can take over from there. <laughs> but all right, so while they're getting set up, I think we will go and take just a very short break uh, while we're getting the lobby set up, but we should be back in just a few minutes. Uh, so hopefully we'll get this thing set up.
And welcome back. I uh, apologize for the delay. We're just trying to get uh, everything set up. We think everything is ready. And this may end up be for just one round, but we want to make sure everything's done properly. So let's get back to Clubhouse. So this should be match point. Marion is defending. Good. Uh, yeah, these things happen, folks. So we understand that, uh, especially when doing a rehost, uh, you just have to make sure all the settings are correctly and mistakes made. I've done it before. I remember one time I had to rehost a match and I botched up on the size and it's like, whoops, and I had to rehost again. So never put me in charge. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. But all right, so that this is the official match point. If Cumberland's takes this, they will take game one. Um, so we're going to see. It looks like Mary's going to go with a very similar comp as they've done in previous rounds. Yeah, Jaeger, Frost, Kaid, Doc, and Smoke. Mr. C4 Gamer, Corey, thank you for the subscription, my guy. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you all for for your subs. Your support is uh, uh, greatly appreciated. And if we get if we get enough subs, we get to unlock two emote slots. Good. So then in our poll, it would be the top two that get to be uh, added to our repertoire. I think we're actually eleven subs away from that. I know Twitch likes their emotes, so I'm for it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially this is the only place where you can get those custom pile emotes. You can't get them anywhere else. But all right, and we do see that Azura used the six pick to bring in the caviar. Uh, caviar instead of the frost. I'm I'm liking that because they've been playing very uh, point based, not really expanding out and get, picking the cab. That means they're gonna have to go out and mm -hmm. Cav's whole point is they get a pick, possibly an interrogate, depending on the circumstances. Right. You were talking before about one of the problems that Marriott has. They didn't really have a roamer, yeah. uh, so caviar fills that role. <laughs> so nice people talk about donuts donuts sounds so good all right both sides are agreeing for donuts yeah. after this pretty much yeah you gotta love that there is a good cohesion between the, the two teams sometimes when you play against a team they're just like i, I don't want to say like toxic but like borderline bming <laughs> so it's nice that everyone's in good spirits with everything but trying to get the the match scheduled and everyone playing. I know I do my best to be as sensitive as I can because um, I don't I don't know how far I would say to go of me having anger issues, but I can I can get angry fairly quick when it comes to these things, especially Rambo. Yeah. So there's <laughs> watching certain parts of these matches. There's a little like voice in the back of my head that's getting mad at certain parts, but I got to keep that back because I'm not. Hey, I'm here talking over it and b i'm not even playing it so why just, should i be mad <laughs> well, it's, it's just like watching any other sport where you're watching your favorite team doing something you're like why are you doing that <laughs> it's it's not too different here all right so it looks like marion is going to protect the cctv marion has to win this round if we want to continue this game otherwise cumberlands will take it and we will go to game two Luca just kind of back in that door. No one's come by just yet. Great, an opening case. He has to throw a, a nitro over there. I can't remember what that gadget sound was. That looks like a thermite charge. Gonna throw out the smoke right away. Although the send is gonna go down. Op four has located a bomb. Nest in position. The shots are going to and Cienzura does take out Unlogical, so it's now a 4v4. What's 
once again, I feel like most of the team is still point focused on what they're positioning. I f uh, Azura is doing good in that regard of, as Cal going around underneath and everything, but they're all just sitting on the bombs themselves, for the most part. And Justify does take out I Gray. There's only about 35 seconds left in this round. The Marionette does have the advantage. Although there's the flashbang. Actually, no, that's a concussion thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's from Sophia. And someone does get spotted. There are shots everywhere. Which I do feel like Marietta is doing a better defense. They gotta be careful on their B site now. Do put the gas out. Ooh, he hears the play. Ooh, but it's. They're running out of time. It's a one for one. There's only two. It's 2v2 at this point. And they do plant the diffuser, so Merida's going to have to disable that. And Azura goes down. So. Justifies the only one that's left. He's got to take out both of them. But I think he's going to try to take care of the diffuser. He's going to take some shots, and unfortunately, uh, Marietta does go down. Map one going to Cumberland. I will, I will say, I think for the most part, Marietta was starting to get their uh, grip better on playing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so with that, uh, Cumberlands will take game one of this best of three series. I was looking at the leaderboards to see who had all the kills and everything on both teams, but I forgot the reset mates where there's barely any kills. <laughs> yeah, and they might not have screenshotted the uh, the rehost scores. Yeah. So we might not be able to keep track of the stats. Now, I think we're in game two very quickly. Uh, next map is going to be Oregon. It's actually one of the. It's not a new new map, but it's newer in the Collegiate R six rotation, as far as or at least new in the the map pool to pick from. I guess there has been some reworking done with it. Um, we'll see how this goes. Marietta, I believe, will start on defense with this. I could be wrong. I think they're just going to get everything set up here, but it should be. Uh, starting up just a minute now, so I don't think we'll even go to a break. I can't remember what map one was. It's been so well, long. Well, at map this one point. was uh, clubhouse. Oh, for they're starting on attack or defense though. Oh, Mary is starting on offense, and they so they start on offense. Um, okay, yeah, then they should be defending. They should be defending on this one. Oregon first. Because usually yeah. the way the map picks and bans work is like whoever picks a map, the other team gets to pick the side. And most of the time, you want to pick defense first. So I'm going to guess that Marietta got to pick Clubhouse, Cumberland's picked defend first, and then they picked Oregon, so then Marietta got to pick the side. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but we're going to find out. I mean, they haven't started it yet. So just trying to see what uh, I don't know what's going on. Actually, I'm just waiting for it. I I would like to say though that like when it comes to map picks, I feel like I've only seen Clubhouse, Cafe, and Oregon from all the matches that I've come to watch and talk over. And I, I kind of want to see some more maps, but. So I know there are certain maps that aren't very popular in the, the pool. I know oh, yeah. Theme Park is not very popular, so I don't think we're going to see Theme Park. Uh, Consulate is usually not that popular either. Or even Villa. I don't think people like Villa. So I think a lot of the matches will be... Clubhouse is very popular. Cafe. Uh, we're seeing some Oregon. And maybe Bank. I think Bank's still in the roster on the pool i don't know about border border was on the rust on the pool but i think they took it out all right so still waiting for 
And I think everyone's ready, so I don't know. I think Cumberland's made a roster swap because I do see Nimbus in there, and I don't think Nimbus was in there last time. Although I can't say I remember the roster for Cumberland's from game one. But I don't, I don't remember think, I don't seeing think a Nimbus. It was Nimbus. Hmm? I don't think it was Nimbus. Yeah, so yeah, I think they're bringing in Nimbus for this one. We should be turning up any second now. I don't know if it's... I don't know why, but seeing the uh, college uh, and the whole like clan tag type of thing at the end of everyone's names it's it irritates me i think it's bringing me back to the days where uh you're in matches and you have someone either on your team or the enemy team with ttv in their name and they're trying to do their best to flex on the entire lobby <laughs> I want to start his original host. Uh, okay, yeah, so it looks like I think they're going to have to recreate the lobby because the... Yeah, I think the person who originally created the lobby left. I don't know if there was a sub or if he had to take off. But they couldn't hit start because that person was not there. So I think they're going to just try to recreate it. I'm going to see when Coach wants to out there. Yeah, so while we're we're going to take a, just a, we'll take a very short break uh, while we're waiting for things to get set up. So we'll be back uh, in just a minute or two.
right, welcome back. Uh, thank you for waiting. Thank you for your patience. Uh, it will be rewarded because the next game is underway. So this will be Oregon. Uh, Mary will be defending first, and the Cumberlands will be attacking. So we'll see what the uh, the bands will be this time. We might see some similar bands from uh, from game one. Waiting for that first ban. And it looks like they're gonna go with they're gonna go with the ying, the ying. I'm a little surprised about that one. I don't see that picked a whole lot, regardless. Yeah. I don't... Either to ban or to play. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if Marietta saw something they didn't like, but Ying was not picked at all in game one. That's a very interesting pick. Maverick. Alright, so they decided to go with the Mavericks of the Thermite this time, which is arguably a little bit better. Yeah, Cumberland can now, since they're in the attack first, they can easily get in there better with the Thermite. Mirror ban on Oregon, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I can't seem surprised at all. I don't know. I, I think I play Mir the most on defense. No matter which one are they going to be. Are they gonna, looks like they're going to be voting Vigil again? That's two votes for. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go with the Vigil. Um, yeah, they, they the white team does not like Vigil. It just seems to me they don't want someone creeping around uh, that you can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's always nerve-wracking in a, in a first-person shooter. If there's someone nearby and you you know they're there, but you don't know where they are. Like a bad horror movie. Yeah. I mean, the game's quiet, too, until there's, like, a sudden sound. All right, so we're going to see. Well, and the Monty wasn't banned, so we're going to see some Monty in this game. Uh, Monty on Oregon. Yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> We've seen this time, uh, Marietta going with the Al Rico's going to go with the Alibi this time, and Justifiable six pick to the Malusi. That is a good pick, seeing the Monte in there, and the Ash. The Ash is a three speed. She runs in fast, but Monte, you just made the slowest guy on the team even slower. Plus, I don't know if he can hold up his shield or not. It's slowed. I can't remember. Oh, well, we might find out. <laughs> Yeah, I know I left the room for a moment, but there's a, a tiny little rant I have in my head, but I'm going to spare people watching it because it's kind of dumb. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. But still. I don't know. It's weird. I know. Ten seconds left. I don't know why that mute charge is set so far seconds. away, but also it kind of seems... Mm. Like it's also out in the open a little too much. Well, I feel like they're maybe they're trying to have it serve like a dual purpose. So, like let's say there's a drone that's coming by. If you put that that mute jammer like we're up against the that wall, then the radius of the mute jammer isn't as far out. So the the uh, the drone has to come closer for it to be disrupted. By putting out as much as possible, it's covering a larger area to handle any drones that come by. It's a little bit of a min-max, actually. I also know that you can't put it too far away, though, because then it won't get the sides as well. well. That's why I think they were trying to line up carefully when you saw that red circle that they were trying yeah. to make sure it still covers uh, the wall. So they're, they're trying to get the cover of the wall while maximizing how much it covers the rest of the room. I, I but just... now they're putting a second one. And it doesn't look like it worked. They were able to... A breach it and he was trying to do a, uh, a mute trick that's supposed to be done for bandit and seeing Azura does take out Blakerns I don't know if that was the Monty but one of them does go down 
Although she's gonna fall, so they're not gonna be able to get the interrogation. My glass breaking sound. I don't know. We see Luca is getting knocked down, and he's gonna get finished off by Ranga. And just like that, Ranga gets a double kill. Be advised, Op 4 has located a bomb. Justify does take out Nimbus in the process, but it's still a 2v4 in favor. And yeah, Cumberland has been able to plant the diffuser, so that's going to force Marietta's hand. Seems like once again, there's a problem where Marietta has gotten herself just in the corner. And they know where bomb is. For the and yeah, the problem is they see the he sees the claymore right there. He can't go through the door. So he's kind of stuck. And the Monty's just kind of there blocking him off. Yeah, there's just not much he can do. They they, they completely blocked him off from preventing from being able to go anywhere. They breached into the right room and were able to lock down the diffuser. And I noticed the mute was trying to uh, mute trick, which is not as easy to do against a thermite. If you want to do something like that, you have to use a bandit trick. Because that will actually destroy the uh, thermite, and once it's set off, you can't mute it again to turn it off. Well, it looks like they are going to go with the bandit this time. I think they're fine that the that, yeah that as you said that view trick was not working so let's see if the bandit trick uh goes any better. And is there a take drop in the frost for Kev? Protect the bombs. Down down in the laundry. I think after the rework on this map, laundry's a much more weirder point to hold. Because there's so many new walls that they could possibly come from. But there's no main hatch, so that is also a good point, because it's attacking team opening up a hatch just leaves a big open window. But literally and figuratively. So it's almost like it, it gives the defense of options of which walls do they want to fortify and which ones do they not. Since they can't cover all of them, they can at least choose where they want the the attackers to come from. They're waiting to hear from... As as, I don't think they know about the trick where like you can... Um, actually get some holes through the wall. I don't think they did that before. Like, if you put holes through the wall before you put the wall up, it's easier to hear them come by. Oh, yeah. Ambush set. Stay clear. This game's sound is really amazing in a lot of senses. Um, because I think vertical audio is really difficult to do, and I think Rambo does it well compared to other games. Yeah, I said the like, game design in general has been pretty good with the with the audio because if you, this is the programmer side of me, but you can set up that your audio source to come from a specific location and have that ra radiate out from that spot. So now a lot of times with games, they can actually set where audio comes from a specific coordinate in a three D plane. Oh, well, that's that's not correct, but in a three dimensional area, and have that kind of resonate from that spot. So. Yeah, Ubisoft is definitely taking advantage of that in this game. It's really cool when all things said and done, but... I'll say, Bandit has done a great job in keeping this wall down pack. He's he's had uh, Thatcher use all his EMPs, so they can no longer get through that wall beside them. Yeah, 
And that also will eat up a lot of the clock for Cumberlands as well. And Luca with the frag on the Nimbus. Although Rika goes down. And I think he got some shots onto Monty. Or Logical does go down. Reloading mag. He just goes in there and just starts shooting. I mean... Neither of them can see in that, so might as well. <laughs> Although we see Luca does take a little bit of damage. Op four has located a bomb. You know what to do. I think Timberland knows exactly where he's at. And I'm surprised no one's gone around to try to flank Cumberland yet. You see, Salad does take him out. Yep. Saw with the spray. Fifteen seconds. But Cumberlands does not have a whole lot of time. They're gonna have to make a move, and the send does take out Blakers. There's only ten seconds left, but they do manage to take uh, plant the diffuser. And we're seeing a one for one trade. So I. I don't know why you would. They tried to def defuse it, but there were still two people up for Cumberlands. It's just the, the audio cue, and that's that. Yeah, I mean, when, it, when the diffuser is playing, you have to take out the rest of the team before you try to disable the diffuser. I guess they're talking about the fact that Ash survived during the plant, and I think it was shooting at, and they have no idea what happened. But for some reason, Ash was able to survive that. It's if like Marietta is playing a little slow, but it, it it's not hurting them as much as it did in the last map. Okay, well, I mean they're on defense too. I don't think they necessarily want to need to play like an aggressive offense. I think overall, defensively, they're doing okay. It's just, I think Cumberland's has the better shot. Yeah. Too much going on. I mean, they're still watch the wall there with the bandit. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little quiet. I'm nah. trying to I'm trying to text to see when I need to be. Oh, don't worry about it. Ready. I mean, right now, we're there hasn't really been a whole lot of activity. It's just been <laughs> like just waiting for I mean, uh, yeah, something. A minute twenty left, and no one's died yet. <laughs> Careful! Don't don't be the don't call it force a caster's curse. <laughs> the 
We're gonna start hearing some gunshots. Once again, Marietta is just bunched up. All of them are in one spot, it seems. Well, that can be really good or really bad, just depending on how things set up. And we do see C and Zero. It's actually taking out two from Cumberlands. That's nice. Although Blake is taking out one and Luca goes down, so now it's evened up with the 2v2. But actually, Lakin actually takes out Justify as well, so now there's only two left. But the Sen takes out one. One friendly operator remaining. But Marietta was winning until they were losing. I think everything happened in a span of 20 seconds. So I was about to say, then Green Grip though, can either be really good or really bad because you have the numbers <laughs> advantage where you can actually have like a 2v1. Or, if you have someone who's spraying and does not die, they can take out multiple people once. And I think the latter is what happened. Yeah. Sir, so getting the first shot on Salad, but Val getting the headshot, which negates everything when it comes to damage. It's currently 0-3 for Marietta. I mean, the thing is, Marietta's having some good plays. It's, it's just, I think Cumberland's is overall doing better unfortunately but i think marina can still take some rounds they just gotta get the right picks and like the, the round before this it was unfortunate that the, somehow ash was able to survive the the planting of the diffuser we still don't know exactly how that happened i don't i don't think there was anything like malicious or anything going on because even Cumberland doesn't know how that happened but so it is unfortunate Oh? Secure the bombs. What happened there? Uh, seeing Azura. Uh, looks like she looks like looks like she DC'd. So Marietta will be using their second reho. Yeah, it looks like she got disconnected. So they are gonna use a their second rehost. So here's the thing, if I remember the rules correctly, both teams have now used up their two rehosts. So if something goes wrong now, they can't do a rehost. I don't know what it is, but this lobby has been all kinds of whack. <laughs> uh, it might just be internet there too. Two. It's either internet or the servers with Ubisoft, but they're gonna have to recreate it. Hopefully, we get it set up where Humblins is up three to zero. So at round four, Marietta on defense. Yeah. Not the smoothest game I've yeah, seen. Yeah, but... I mean, things happen. It's it's unfortunate. I know it can be frustrating at times. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them a chance to get the lobby set up. So we're going to take another quick break. <laughs> um, before we do, I'll just go ahead and throw out another reminder about our emo poll. So once again, thanks because, thanks to your support. Uh, we required enough Twitch subscriptions to be able to access a new emote slot. And we have some emotes designed and we love them all very much. We would love to put all four of them available to you, but we can't do that just yet. We would need more subs to make that happen. So, we're asking you, which emote would you like to see and use on our t uh, Twitch channel? So whether it's Pio Rage, Pio Thump, Pio Law, or Pio S. Last time I checked, which was earlier this morning, uh, Pio S was in the lead. Uh, we'll see if that uh, lasts, but if you want to have your vote, you can go to link2.run slash p slash hA2hz6un. And I think those are all capitalized. But, um, but yeah, so that poll will be up until the end of the day Friday uh, on October 9th. And then after that, we will announce the uh, the emote that is available. All right, so I think we're getting a couple of things here uh, set up.
Okay, so they're just getting these lobby set up, set up. So I don't even think we'll need to take a break. Uh, we're just still working on a couple logistics because, uh, as a reminder, uh, after this match, we still have more esports for you throughout the day. Uh, our Overwatch team will be playing against Bethel University around noon. Uh, so that will be an exciting match in the Great Lakes Esports Conference. And then uh, after that will be League of Legends at 1 o'clock. And it looks like we're ready to go. Cross our fingers and hope everything is set up correctly. I'm crossing my fingers. There it is on defense. Round four. That looks correct. All right. And the bands are, yep. Yeah, bands are set. So now let's just hope that no one DCs. Because at this point, I believe all rehosts have been used by both sides. So like if there's another DC, you have to play it out. Yeah, it looks like uh, Luke Nadon will be using a six pick to bring out the smoke instead of the mute. Which that means that Arietta has nothing to stop any hard breachers that they have, which they have a thermite, which is a I won't quote it exactly, but a big hole coming. <laughs> yeah. Interesting choice here. They have, they have a different kind of um, slowdown than they had the last map. They have a Goyo Castle and Smoke instead of more so traps. Yeah, they seem to be going with I don't know, more defense, I guess, with the castle walls, or, or you got the exploding shields from Goya. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see how this uh, how this goes. Waiting for loading. Hopefully, no one DC during that. Protect the bombs. No one disconnected. That's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I'd say the only one bad thing about. Uh, some of the players playing in their rooms this uh, semester is there's been a, seems a lot of internet issues and power outages within some of the halls, mm -hmm. and I, I I know that for the fact because my hall I think the power went out four times this week. And I'm yeah, uh, and it's I've noticed that even on the uh, the other side of campus too, like. It was weird, like two times at the same time the power goes out. It was almost like a scheduled outage, which I know that's not the case. Yeah, I don't know what's up, what's going on with that, but um, that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to eSports because we are uh, electronical. We are uh, connecting over the internet and we need to be able to have decent connections to play these games. And Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really hard to at 100% if your internet is not where it should be. Now, all of our players who are playing um, remotely do have the option of uh, connecting to the esports network, so they would still at least have the same dedicated bandwidth as if they were in the esports room. Now, if the internet just goes out, there's not much to be done about it, but at least they wouldn't be hindered if everyone's watching like Netflix or Disney Plus or using up all the bandwidth. We do see that breach in the wall. Smoke's gonna throw out some gas. He's getting someone. I hear some coughing. I mean, smoke is just a good op to stop pushes, and if someone gets caught in that gas, it is a decent amount of health drained. Slowly. Yeah, it looks like there's a Monty there. I think I yeah, I see the shield. Yeah, I think they have Thermite Ash, Sledge, Thatcher, and Monty, if I remember correctly. Which are it, I like that cop. There's a bunch of the basic starting ops, but they're all still really viable for getting the job done. That's what I like about Rainbow Six. Like in some games, when they have like the the first like cheap or free characters that I mean they're basic, but they're not necessarily like end game meta type characters. Whereas with Rainbow Six, they put out some ops that are easy to access, 
but you can still use them later on. Or they're still part of the meta. Yeah, and we see Smoke taking a ton of damage there. And the Sen's gonna fall. Smoke's gonna try to smoke him out, for lack of a better word. Gonna throw another canister. He's gonna have to back away and switch weapons because he has to reload. That's the only thing I don't like about the SMG 11. It, it, it's a decent gun, but it does not have the biggest mag. Be advised, like in Scooting Dawn. Uh, I think that's how they try to balance it. One uh, that's unfortunate, justify getting there, but. Yeah, with that, Cumberland's just gonna take a, a very strong win. Failure. Right now, Cumberland's is up four to zero, so they only need three more rounds and they'll take the series. Oh, they changed. Mary changed their comp up a good bit. Oh, yeah, because they're realizing oh. what they are doing does not work. So we're going to see Oryx and Hila. Oh, actually, no, they're going to six pick back to smoke. Mm -hmm. And say with that Oryx pick and the Ella pick, they, that makes them kind of focus more towards roaming than actually holding the point. Because Oryx, Ella, and Cav are all usually operators that mm -hmm. run around or pick off them from the sides. Yeah, we're seeing we still have Caviera, so looks like we have two rovers in this case, unless I'm mistaken about my comp. Bandit can, but Bandit also has to make sure that he can be on point and can a trick. Keep his uh, stuff going. Smoke is definitely an anchor. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just sets up his gadgets and does whatever. was odd but i think i know what that was right okay when he was walking out of that room at the first i kept dragging him back towards it and i had that happen to me before where i couldn't go through a specific door i don't know if that's a server glitch or what but it's it's definitely the game not uh, i think there might be some lags i think in that top right we see like the yeah lags. i think there's the servers having some connection issues So Luca might be lagging. I think it's been up all game, so that might explain why the Ash survived earlier in that earlier round where maybe the lag was making it difficult to shoot. Seen seems there has gone down. They're trying to breach. Ooh, there's the trick going off. It's really close call, but and it's trying to do everything he can to use up those thermite charges. Getting like earns. Yeah. Not to be fired left and right. Two are down for Marietta. But one for Cumberland is already down. And we're gonna see Luca go down to the Monty. Friendly, last operator standing. So Allo's the only one that stands. 
Does get a hit off, but he takes a little damage himself. Mission critical. Bomb diffuser activated. One thing I haven't noticed is that they haven't been opening the one wall typically used for a... Uh, um, ro uh, switching, rotating in between points. They haven't just sticking to the one doorway, which kind of let uh, Al get killed there. We are in round six. Uh, Looks like Mary is trying to. It, it seems like they're just trying to find a comp that works. So I mean, we're seeing the the lesion coming out this time. We're seeing Doc coming in. Maestro. Mm -hmm. Secure the area. Keep the bombs protected. Round has begun. Yeah, I'm being told that there is some lag, and that is affecting the gameplay. So I think one of the struggles that Marion might be having is I don't know if it's the connect, if the if it's the uh, college's connection or if it's connection to Ubisoft servers, but they are experiencing some lag, and that's causing some difficulties in their gameplay. Uh, well, um, I'm gonna have to dip out of here probably after this round. So, uh, I'll warm up on Overwatch and I'll come in and tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If we're having trouble in the, uh, the Overwatch as well, then that will tell us if it's a campus issue or if it's a uh, Ubisoft issue. Luca does take out Salad, so that's one down in favor of Marietta. Oh, they already planned the diffuser, so Marietta was not aware of it. Luca down. Rangan getting a Zura. Justify does take out one. Just finds the only one that's left, and he's already about half health and has to take out. He has to take out one, but he's not going to be able to disable the diffuser in time. And mission just all friendlies have been neutralized. Yeah, Cumberland just went very aggressive. I, I don't know what Marietta was doing. They didn't. Maybe they weren't looking at the bomb site, but they got an early plant. Well, I'm going to have to get set up for. What's coming in an hour, so okay. I guess the only shameless plug I have is come watch Overwatch when, it, when Rainbow's done. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good match, and uh, I'm looking for some good Reinhardt gameplay. So All right. thank you for having me. All right. Wish you the best of luck, <laughs> and we'll we'll see you in an hour. Thank you. All right, so we are at match point. Uh, so Marietta will be on offense, so we're going to see a couple of interesting picks here. So 
The Thatcher was not banned this time, so we are going to see that in play. So that's going to make breaching the walls uh, a lot easier than with the Thatcher Thermite combo. Yeah, it looks like actually Mary's going to go for a very hard breach with Ash, Ace, and Thermite. And using the IQ to detect where the uh, the bandit batteries are. So this is an all-in breach composition. And Marina has to take this round if they want to stay alive in the series. Otherwise, Cumberlands will take the whole thing. Looks like it has found the bomb and... He's gonna lose his drone for it, but that's okay. Your drone has found a bomb. <sighs> Ten seconds. Five seconds to insertion. All right, so here we go. They do spot out uh, a couple of the enemies. So Jaeger, Kai. And Caesar does take out Blankens early, but it's a one for one trade with the spawn peaks. So it is going to be a 4v4 from the get go. Marietta loses their ace, one of their hard breachers. We're seeing a zero does take out unlogical. But this is Marietta's opportunity. So working at me. Luca is droning in to see if he can find where the uh the walls are breached. And Justify works his way in the first floor. Meanwhile, Rika and Luca are working away in the second floor. I think they see someone, so they're taking some shots. MP comes out. And this is going to give Thermite a chance to deploy. And I think it is going to go off. And see, Azura does take out three. So that's 3k for Azura. And they do manage to breach the wall on the second floor. Azura gets four. That's a 4k for Azura. Does she, will she get the ace? She will not get the ace. Justify does get the final... Uh, frag there. He saw his deletion trap. He was like, eh, don't worry about it. So that was a great round for Azura. Uh, especially considering that she was having some uh, lag issues earlier. So Marietta is still alive. So it's not over yet, folks. So we're going to see Marietta going with the same composition as before. It worked. So let's try that again. We need to locate a bomb. Located a bomb. Ten seconds to insertion. Your drone has found a bomb. Looks like Five they're going to spot out a couple from, from the Cumberlands.
Yeah, it looks like... Okay. Uh, they are talking about some lag. And it's not just Marietta. Um, but Cumberland's is getting some lag too. Yeah, it looks like both sides are looking for maybe doing a rehost. I think they're gonna play it through. Oh my goodness, yeah, we, we can see that lag. It is. Yeah, I think Luca was not wanting to do a rehost. I think they want to be done with this game. Uh, that could very well be a uh, possibility. Yeah, the ping is just all over the place for everyone. Yeah, I think now they're gonna to agree to a rehost. Because they were able to take out one. So, well, I don't. I don't know if they're gonna rehost or not. I. Hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna try. Azura is taking out another. Okay. Well, I guess what they're, they're gonna play the round, and then after this, they'll do. They'll be a rehost. Oh, it's a one for one trade, but here's the thing though. Marietta has to win the round if there's going to be a rehost. If Cumberland's wins this round, they take the whole match. And it looks like Justify accidentally team killed uh, Luca, and I'm going to guess that's lag induced. So right now it is a two on two, although Justify is very low. He's going to get the revive off. But yeah, the, the lag is definitely causing problems for both sides. But here's the thing, Marietta has 25 seconds. They have to uh, make a play. Otherwise, Cumberlands will win the whole match. And Justify is the only one that's left. And with that, I believe that's going to be it uh, for, the, uh, for the match. So it's unfortunate that the final round was uh, was for lag, but these things do happen. Both sides were having lag issues. And I know earlier in the week during practices, sometimes there was some lag in Ubisoft. So um, it's unfortunate, but uh, I mean, that does happen. Uh, so with that, uh, the Cumberlands will go... Uh, beat Marietta College White uh, Ramp Row 16 uh, 2 to 0. But we do have more esports matches uh, coming your way. So let's see here. We got the next match is not until noon. So it's about, about 50 minutes away. So here's what I'm going to do um, we'll take down the stream for just a little bit, uh, kind of give it a break. And then we'll bring it back up about 20 minutes before our match with Bethel University. So uh, that so our Overwatch match, uh, team will be playing against Bethel at noon, so less than an hour away. And then immediately following that will be our League of Legends team at 1 o'clock against Mount Vernon Nazarene University. So uh, we're going to take a little break. We'll take down the stream. We'll bring it back up around about 11.30, 11.40 Eastern time. So be, please be sure to, to come back for that. Uh, so thank you for watching. And we hope to see you in less than an hour.